Can I refill your eggnog for you? Get you something to eat? Drive you out to the middle of nowhere and leave you for dead? No better intro to such a classic Christmas film than that, huh? I hope you didn't do this all on our account, Clark. The National Lampoon film franchise has become a powerhouse collection, with one of the most famous being National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And also being a personal favorite. Written by the great John Hughes, who pinned such classics as The Breakfast Club and another holiday favorite, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, this one does not disappoint. There's just something about watching the pressurized chaos of a father trying to create the perfect Christmas memories when nothing will go right. How did you get through it? I had a lot of help from Jack Daniels. I'm Nostalgic Nick for Do You Remember, and today we're checking out the cast of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation to see what they got into after they had to take down all the Christmas lights. Because after all, the little lights are not twinkling, Clark. I know, Arden. Thanks for noticing. If you enjoy this cast rewind, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for even more nostalgia you won't want to miss. Chevy Chase. Clark Griswold is brimming with excitement to give his family the perfect Christmas at home, something I think we can all relate to, and his begrudging family is forced to accompany him on all the necessary traditions, like cutting down your own behemoth of a Christmas tree, high-speed sledding, and of course, decorating the house so it's visible from outer space. Most people know Chevy from the primetime players, aka Saturday Night Live's inaugural cast. Chevy actually worked with National Lampoon before playing word association with Richard Pryor. Check out Do You Remember's favorite sketches from the golden 70s after this. That one's definitely on it. Two years before SNL, in 1973, Chevy was part of National Lampoon television show Lemmings Dead in Concert, along with John Belushi and Christopher Guest. We'll have a little more on Chris Guest later in this video too. After SNL, Chevy had some major film successes, starting with 1978's Foul Play, which earned him two Golden Globe nominations. Then it was a hole-in-one with 1980's golf wisecrack Ty Webb in Caddyshack that ultimately catapulted Chevy to multiple franchises like Fletch Moon River. and of course National Lampoon's Vacation in 1983. Chase's life, however, hasn't been as happy-go-lucky as Clark Griswold's. He was plagued by drug addiction in the 80s, being admitted to a hospital for his addiction to prescription painkillers, a back injury during SNL being the initial cause. Then in 2016, he was once again hospitalized for his alcoholism. Thankfully, Chevy has been sober since 2018. One of his more successful recent jobs was back on the tube, being part of a stellar acting core in the comedy series community. Today at 77, he's not really slowing down. One of his last projects was a 2019 Netflix buddy comedy starring he and Richard Dreyfuss called The Last Laugh. Check it out if you haven't already. Beverly D'Angelo, Ellen Griswold, the perfect compliment to Clark with a bit more common sense than her optimistic husband. But we can't rid her of all the blame. After all, it is her cousin Eddie who comes to wreak festive havoc and fill the sewers up with combustible poo fumes. Merry Christmas! Dinner was full! After getting her start on Broadway, being a talented singer, she transitioned to films in the mid-70s, with a breakthrough role being 1978's Clint Eastwood-led film Every Which Way But Loose. Then she earned a Golden Globe nomination portraying the legendary Patsy Cline in 1980's Coal Miner's Daughter. D'Angelo has since appeared in over 60 films, with her Ellen Griswold leading the way. But she also has dramatic chops, and she showed those off playing Ed Norton's mother in American History X. Later in her career, she had a recurring role as a domineering agent in HBO's Entourage, and just recently co-starred with Sigourney Weaver in the film The Good House. One thing's for certain, at 69 years old, Bev is far from done. Johnny Galecki. Rusty Griswold is in Christmas decoration hell as he untangles endless lights and is constantly being beckoned with a loud Russ! even if he is right next to dad. Galecki started acting in 1987 and immediately got two holiday classics. In addition to his Russ, he also was part of 1989's Prancer. Then Galecki turned his attention to TV and never looked back. You will certainly remember him as David Healy from 1992's smash hit, Roseanne. And from one monumental show to another, in 2006, he helped make The Big Bang Theory, one of the most watched shows of all time through its 12 season run. In 2006, in 2018, Forbes estimated he was the world's second highest paid TV actor, earning $25 million. No wonder he wasn't impressed by grandma's whole quarter. Juliette Lewis. 
Audrey Griswold is the moody teenager who is not thrilled relegated to sharing a room with Russ while the grandparents are visiting. She also freezes solid while picking out the family tree. What a great movie. Juliette Lewis is the daughter of character actor Jeffrey Lewis, and she began acting on TV at just 14 years old. Her Audrey Griswold was a huge film break for the young actress, and she further supplanted her star status, gaining an Oscar nod for Martin Scorsese's remake of Cape Fear in 1991. The 90s were were good to her, with starring roles in popular films like 1994's Natural Born Killers and 96's From Dusk Till Dawn. Aside from her acting chops, she also has musical chops, as she went on to form the rock band Juliet and the Licks in 2003. She even has some solo material, with her most recent studio album being released in 2017 called Future Deep. Today in her late 40s, she really does it all, including supporting Little Kids Rock, a nonprofit organization that works to restore and revitalize music education in disadvantaged U.S. public schools. Randy Quaid. Gotta love Cousin Eddie, oblivious to all social cues. He's got a lip fungus he ain't identified yet. And impervious to embarrassment. What a character. Many of his characteristics, like the clicking of the tongue, were based off a guy that Quaid knew from his Texas youth. Randy got his start in 1971 with The Last Picture Show, and followed that with an Academy Award-nominated role in 1973's The Last Detail. He took home an Emmy in 1987 for his portrayal of U.S. President Lyndon Johnson in LBJ The Early Years. Brother of actor Dennis Quaid, Randy has always stood out playing some truly wacky types, from Cousin Eddie to his alien-believing fighter pilot, I'm back! in 1997's blockbuster, Independence Day. In recent years, though, he's had some run-ins with the law. He and his wife were arrested on multiple occasions for crimes like fraud, burglary, and even deportation after seeking asylum in Canada. He hadn't acted since 2009, until 2018 with a film called All You Can Eat. Today at 70 years old, he and his wife have apparently made a permanent home in Vermont, but we shall see. Miriam Flynn. Cousin Catherine is proof that there is someone out there for everyone. He read the squirrels were high in cholesterol. Chicago's Second City alum is no stranger to comedy and got her start as a regular cast member on the Tim Conway show. But many will recognize her voice alone as Grandma Longneck. I think we're going to meet a lot of Longnecks on our way. In the Land Before Time franchise. More recently, she had a nice recurring role on the 2005 sitcom Grounded for Life as Sister Helen. Today in her late 60s, she has been keeping very busy, both acting and voice acting regularly. Most recently in an episode of the popular CBS sitcom Mom, John Randolph. Clark Sr. is a sweet father and grandfather for the family. Always proud of Clark. Randolph was a gifted stage and screen actor who, although serving in the Air Force in World War II, was also blacklisted from Hollywood in the 40s and 50s. Thankfully, that didn't last because he gave us incredible performances like co-starring with Pacino in 1973's Serpico. Randolph passed away in 2004 at age 88, but was acting up until that previous year. What a professional. Diane Ladd. Nora was the loving mother of Clark. Clark, it's so lovely. Who excellently played dead when the family was attacked by the killer squirrel. Ladd is a powerhouse actor, nominated for three Oscars. First in 1975 for Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, then in 1991 for Wild at Heart, and the following year once again for Rambling Rose. Today, Ladd is 85 years old and still very much at it. She currently stars in the Hallmark Channel series, Chesapeake Shores. E.G. Marshall. The intimidating and gruff art was tough on Clark. It is an ugly tree anyway. But heck, that's an in-law's job, isn't it? Marshall had quite a career, widely known as the lawyer Lawrence Preston on the hit 60s show The Defenders. Not just a TV star, Marshall was also juror number four in the legendary courtroom drama 12 Angry Men. He died at 84 years old in 1998 from lung cancer. Doris Roberts. Ellen's mother, Frances, was a perfect addition to this all-star cast. With a career that spanned six decades, she is best known as the hilarious Marie. It sounds like you're becoming just like your father. From Everybody Loves Raymond. Another standout TV role was in the 80s Pierce Brosnan-led show, Remington Steel. Doris passed away at 90 years old in 2016, but we will forever remember her in her massive body of work. 
Wow, what a cast. And we didn't even get to the two cool for school neighbors, played by the incredible Julia Louis-Dreyfus. But do you know who played the male counterpart? None other than Christopher Guest's younger brother, Nicholas Guest. Man, those two were perfect. We actually kind of felt bad for them at the end, and for their carpet. So tell us, what's your favorite part of this hilarious holiday classic? Who is your favorite character? I gotta go with Aunt Bethany, who couldn't hear a dump truck driving through a nitroglycerin plant. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Let us know in the comments. We read them all. And if you enjoyed this Lampoon Rewind, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for even more memories. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks for watching.